Hey. Hey. I hope hey. you can hear me. All right. I need a. I just need a rose in the window here, and then I'll be good to go. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, if I can get you on the screen, I'll be doing even better. But I think we're almost there. Nice. As I was saying earlier, like this is kind of new for me, and um, I'm I'm like I guess I'm learning as I go in trying to provide advice. And I feel like there's a lot of things you can teach me too, in terms of like how you approach the whole kind of Twitch and YouTube game. Game. Um, yeah, yeah. I saw it would be interesting because I probably do do things. <laughs> quite a bit different maybe in some cases yeah and i feel like there's not enough of this in the i guess at least in the chess space of like just having these sort of talks where um like just helping helping other creators and uh i mean i, th I think it's it's very important because streaming and making youtube videos alone it can be very isolating and sometimes it's hard to actually get like support or like good feedback so um, I mean, this is something I, I want to probably continue doing uh, with, uh, I guess, more people. And we, we can always do future sessions like this, too. Anyway, um, I have a, a like a whole Google Doc, which I, I know I shared with you, yeah, which I'll right. probably just show on screen. Uh -huh. yeah, so I'm um, and the, like, so I woke up this morning and the first thing I did, because uh, my phone just like alerted me, you you posted this this Stafford Gambit video. I was like literally the first thing I watched this morning. It was so epic. And actually, yeah. so here was going to be my gimmick. <laughs> I've had this video for like a couple weeks now, probably, and I was mm. going to wait till you were looking at my YouTube channel, like, and then I was just gonna like secretly show my chat Ooh. that I'm like dropping <laughs> it and publish it during the thing. But uh, here's my here here's my my big secret on mm -hmm. on getting more viewership. Every day that Eric Rosen doesn't publish a video, if I publish a video, it gets more views. Oh, that's interesting. So you didn't publish something yesterday, so I'm like, well, I guess I got to release it now. And they didn't have any... Wow. <laughs> that's something I never even thought of. I've, I've been trying to upload daily for the last uh, however many... Like, yeah. I've, I've been trying to upload daily, I guess, since, like, Yeah, July if I would have uploaded and... yesterday, this would have been the surprise gimmick of the stream. <laughs> um, I just skipped a video yesterday, so... You'll have to be on the lookout for days that I don't so, post So, yeah, videos. I think I need to make content that Eric Rosen viewers would want, but then mm. save it. A month. <laughs> if you go every day for a month, I'm just going to save it. It's just going to be canned, and then the one day Eric doesn't put content out, just boom. Mm -hmm. There's some random Lucini gambit. Boom. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if there's some, like, mutual benefit, too, because I've done videos, uh, like, on Nagmanson, uh, on OrthoSchnapp. Yeah. Where like sometimes I'll just I'll mention the fact that I, I saw these gambits from your channel. Right, I wonder right. if that in some way gives you some some additional views or can, it probably complain. does. So I feel like on the days you did those, I probably get like one to two hundred maybe extra subscribers. At this point, I'm getting oh, wow. like maybe a hundred a day. So I think like when you mm -hmm. do it, I get like an extra hundred or, or maybe even more. So they actually probably Ooh. do help a lot. Um, so you know I'm really appreciative of that, obviously. And and it's weird too. So I feel like probably on YouTube. It just like we help each other, and then probably on Twitch we're like mortal enemies from like a deep business sense. Because like if we're both live on Twitch, <laughs> it, then well, it's like this is one of the issues one. with Twitch. Yeah, like every every streamer who's like live at the same time on Twitch yeah. is kind of technically a competitor with each other because right. you only like viewers only watch one stream at once. At least most viewers, <laughs> um, which is why I guess collaborations are nice. Right. Right. But it's also why YouTube, like, it's, it's, I think it's very important to actually have a, a very, like, active presence on YouTube if you're a streamer where you can have content that's watchable at any time of day where you're not necessarily competing directly with people. But inherently, I think YouTube does offer a better kind of return on investment for growing the audience. Yeah, A lot sure. more so, so than if Twitch. I, if I do a stream, like a normal chess mm -hmm. stream, I probably get 20 to 30 followers. And if I put a YouTube video of me doing something on Twitch, I probably also get 30 followers. <laughs> 30 subscribers? Uh, like followers to the to Twitch. Oh, interesting. And then, I mean, so I'm streaming a lot less, but I'm getting way more average viewers now. And it's all because of YouTube. It just has to be. Yeah, and you're definitely at, you kind of reached that inflection point where if you keep up the momentum with YouTube, it can grow. I mean, it grows much, much quicker than Twitch, as you you know. Right. But it can also help like drive audience to Twitch when you do stream. Um, so, and then 
I think there's a few reasons for this, and you, you probably you're probably aware of them. But just in terms of like YouTube being uh, more of a discovery platform, where um, I mean it's much easier to search for like very specific content on YouTube. Right. Everything's in VOD form, so you can watch whenever. Uh, and Twitch doesn't have that same sort of like discovery algorithm. Um, of course, like there is, I mean, Twitch has a lot of benefits where it's, it's built for live streaming. You have the kind of the, the live interaction with the, the chat. And um, I mean, there's, there's nice ways to kind of grow, grow a, a closer community. Um, but yeah, I mean, from my experience, like, I guess YouTube subscribers just show like a much better kind of more long-term return than, um, than Twitch followers. And that's not to say like, uh, you should just discard Twitch. It's, it's good to have some balance, but, um, it's just kind of the, the, um, the, the truth of things with, uh, right, right. With, with YouTube just being a, a larger platform than Twitch. So, can we get into the big one? Yeah. Uh, I have a problem that you don't have. I do some style of content on Twitch that does great on Twitch, and YouTube yeah. hates it. I saw you talking about this the other day on your stream that was titled, like, Should I Start 50 YouTube Channels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was, I, I was thinking of it. So I... Uh, I was thinking of making other ones because I do silly stuff. I, I, the nice way would be, let's call it personality content. I think okay. this is the nicest way to think of it. But I do stuff, for example, the I Beat You, I Ban You. I do that if I have like 100 people on Twitch and I change my title to I Beat You, I Ban You, I have like 180 in like the next 10 minutes. Wow. Twitch loves it. They sign up for it. They want to get banned. They, they love it. Every day. You're and now in stream, forever, they come in and they'll like just... ban me. They love do you, it. Do you unban them eventually, or they're just no. shunned from... Occasionally. On the very first one, there was a wheel. Uh -huh. So, like, it spun, and then, like, they, there'd be consequences, including banning the person that just tipped, which actually happened, and then one of them was unban everybody, which also happened at one point, so those oh, people are unbanned. Nice. Okay. But no, I mean, if it's a ban, you're permanently banned. That was the deal. Oh, no. And so I think on Twitch, like, that's not such a big deal. Like, I think people are used to getting banned, probably. And it just means you can't, like, talk in the chat, so nobody really cares. Like, you can still watch, probably, you just can't talk anymore. But and a lot of the times, it's people that haven't really been watching forever. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> but then you put something like that on YouTube. And they something don't great. You wrote an epic song about it. People loved uh -huh. it. And then uh, you lose uh, you lose a few subscribers if you put that kind you, of you stuff. You wrote a song about it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can test it out. Uh, Did you perform it? We can it test too? out the song. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it would require me banning somebody, and I, I, probably nobody would be willing to do it. So, mm. but, uh, yeah, whenever I ban people, I play a song now. And, uh, but uh, okay. essentially, so. the... The first time I did it, I made some video and it was like the entire I Beat You, I Ban You stream. It lost, mm -hmm. after like a couple days, it was at like negative 12 subscribers. Uh. And then I put out this this recent one, <laughs> which I'll, I'll show on stream. With this, okay. It was epic. It had a song. It had this amazing thumbnail as me as a judge, you know, banning people. And within the first hour, I lost 30 subscribers on YouTube. Oh no. I think it bounced back a little bit. <laughs> But it wasn't good for my YouTube growth. Yeah, it's um, I mean that that might be a sign that you should just do that on Twitch and maybe not post it on YouTube, even uh, though YouTube is great for like repurposing content from Twitch. Um, but if you'd like to hear the song, we can we can play the game. Yeah, if you think it's a good if, yeah, if no, you think to... it's a good idea. I mean, I'm willing. I'm willing. I, to... I don't know. Uh... <laughs> if Eric Rosen thinks it's a good idea for me to ban, I'm, I'm just curious M, though. Like I would do it. So there, I had a couple a couple things I'm curious about. First of all, when you ban someone, I I was under the impression they just can't see anything in chat. Ah, uh, okay. They can't see chat at all. They can just watch I'm, the show. I'm also pretty chat. sure it prevents them from like making new accounts and then. Like, I'm pretty sure that so, it's attached yeah, to their IP. Yeah, it's supposed IP, to be but... like a shadow ban now. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be, but uh, some some people have found a way around it. So I don't know if they're like just using VPN or I don't know how they're doing it. Some people have found a way around it. Uh... <laughs> I feel like there were bugs also in the beginning where like if you unban if you ban someone then unban them they were still having issues with like interacting in the chat. Interesting. Um, but I'm not. I don't not know because they never come sure. back and tell me. <laughs> um, 
you should you should have like a stream where if you get beaten rather rather than have it like negative you have it where if they beat you they become vip for like a month yeah i thought about it i thought about it you know maybe i'll like or i'll gift a sub or something was my idea my main idea was like i'll gift a sub and or otherwise i'll just ban you but you don't have to there's people they're chanting ban him ban him they want they want to know so I, i don't know if it's a good idea to you know ban people look but look at my viewership increasing skyrocketing with the threat of this ban on the line so do you, is it a good idea? Should I ban 824M? Is that is that a good good content move? Long term. Well, like right right now, do you ban? What what did what did he do to you? Uh, uh, he said <laughs> he just he just said you can ban me. He said you can donate my body for science for scientific purposes. Right. He's willing to just fall on the blade. But I just want to make sure you know you're kind of my stream coach. I just want to make sure you think this is a good idea to ban. This I mean, guy. if if you keep up with this and then you beat your whole chat, you'll have no viewers left. Well, so I made this video. I banned oh. two people. All right, I'm gambiting. I, I, I gambited two viewers away. Maybe they're gone. I don't know. Maybe they can't tell oh, me. No. Maybe uh-huh. they're gone. But how many? I wonder how many people actually came over. Is there any? I wonder if there's anybody here that came because they saw the banned stuff. Oh, and if it's and more than really two excited. people, maybe the gambit paid off. Yeah, this is something to like reflect on and be. Be careful because you, you don't want to like end up where everyone's banned and then um, but I guess if it has more of a net positive effect um, So I should do it. I should hit the button pull the trigger I'm not gonna tell you to because I don't want to be held responsible And I don't want them to come after me, but you're you have your own free will so uh, I guess I'll take it. You're you gone <laughs> now. Hopefully you can hear the song <laughs> It's coming. Oh Oh. oh, it's a chicken sound effect. You just got banned. Like <laughs> you just got banned. You just got banned. You just got banned. <laughs> you just got banned. <laughs> I can vaguely hear it. That was, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, if people like it, it so confuses me a little it. bit. They love it. They say that's amazing. Then, then it's something to I think keep up. But um, I mean, it seemed like you got good feedback on YouTube too, at least with a uh, like to dislike ratio. Mm. Well, okay, I guess I can double check. I can see where we're at right now. <laughs> then we'll move on. But... Yeah, only eleven people disliked it. Yeah, it's weird. I lost thirty subs though. I can see what we're, where oh. we're at right now. Uh, but yeah, it is weird. I guess it is weird that the feedback was good. I mean, I'll go ahead and like it to support your your content. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I'm checking the analytics here. Ah, we're in the clear. We went from minus thirty no, to no plus two. Oh. I gained two subscribers from that video total. What a great video! So I guess it's a sign you can you can maybe keep doing it with yeah, lower it's a risk. That's a net positive. So yeah, I think it was, I think it was a great idea, and I'm glad you have given me full permission to continue doing it and a lot more often. I think people are going to really like yeah. it. Yeah. So, like, something like this, where it's very kind of Twitch-oriented, and this will this is more, like, serious tactical advice. Use a video like this to then more, like, actively drive people to watch your Twitch stream. Mm-hmm. Um, which, it, it is nice that you link your Twitch in your video description. But I, I would usually recommend link it within the first two or three lines so it actually shows up without them having to click show more. yeah i thought about that yeah yeah okay so i can look at a description um of some random video here and so yeah a ton of people do that where that's like the first thing i've kind of i, I just write like one word sentences i know a lot of people actually go all out in these descriptions and they <laughs> tell you like yeah everything like you don't want to spend half hour on the video description i mean yeah. put, put more effort into like your title and, and thumbnail but like this um, Twitch, all of this stuff at the bottom that's like Twitch, Discord, Leech S, et cetera, should all I be I assume you have like the def- you, you already made your default description, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's I good. A bunch of... Yeah, that's where you include like all your social links. But I would recommend like have have a call to action for Twitch at the at the top of each description for any uh, any like future videos. Okay, interesting. Um, I know that's what Hikaru does. Is that what Rosen does? 
That's what I do. Yeah. Um, I, I've been doing it recently where I, I have the link and then I even have a, another sentence like follow me on Twitch to get notified when I go live. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then if, if you have like a more like planned event um, or if you have like a, a schedule coming up, you can link maybe your, your stream schedule or um, if you make a Twitter, you can make you can link your Twitter. But um, I mean, description, at least the first few lines of description, it's a good place for call to action. Okay, um, let me, yeah, actually I got my, got my secret notes. I'm adding that one. Yeah. And this is something, I, I know you you watch some like Devin Nash. Mm -hmm. So this is something he he's kind of, uh, one of the tips that he's kind of taught me is, uh, is using the description more productively. Um, and another thing he says, you can use a description to, uh, uh, to optimize like the, the SEO. Um, so it's good to like include any search terms within right, right. the description. Um, Cause I don't know how relevant tags are anymore. Like you, you can still add tags of course. Yeah. But, yeah. It um, seems like they don't do anything. I just put, I put stuff in there because why not put like whatever yeah. the opening is and they put like whatever, but I, I just, I don't spend that much time on descriptions, tags. I just pfft, done. And yeah, you want to save time. Of course. Like there's um, even titles. It feels like a lot of the ones that do well, don't necessarily have the keywords in them. Like mm. one of mine in my last 10 videos, my number two video is Don't Troll Me Bro, which doesn't actually give you any info as to what that's about if you didn't see the thumbnail. Yeah. You know, like I don't even like, I didn't necessarily put the opening name or chest in there. I didn't put like anything in to even try. <laughs> I just wrote some thing that like maybe- It a still performed relatively well to like your other videos. And there's different title styles where you're you kind of you can be very descriptive and, and give people like a clear idea oh, of what the, the content's stuff. about oh no leaked leaked oh this is actually Wait, a good what? one too uh should i put this kind of content out i have a video of me discovering i'm on wikipedia so it has nothing to do with oh. chess it's me discovering i'm on wikipedia is that a good video that could be interesting um i, I can say from personal experience i get less viewership from anything that's not chess like if i put out a scrabble video or you get um, more viewership uh, less viewership Le okay okay that's what i thought um or like i did a photoshop like walkthrough of one of my thumbnails um and still people like the content it just doesn't perform as well because i think youtube kind of picks me up as a as a chess channel and it's promoting to people who predominantly watch chess because now that i'm but looking at these videos that i haven't published and by the way i, I don't publish i make a lot of videos and i even go through the effort of making thumbnails and then i don't publish a lot of them oh wow uh and so i have some that i so i was thinking of making like just a silly schrantz channel where i can like put a things second like YouTube i have a 30 second video of me winning in three moves and then just laughing because I pretty much. Oh yeah, I saw you it. talk about that. Yeah, I, I heard your your anecdote too about like talking with your big like YouTube. You have a friend who's like has a huge YouTube channel yeah. and getting advice from them. Yeah, yeah, and they said don't do it. <laughs> just stick to one, mm -hmm. dude. You got fifteen k subscribers. Just stick to one. You're small fish. <laughs> I th I think it's yeah. It kind of depends on what your overall goals are. I mean, there's going to be much better return on investment if you just stick with your like your current channel and try and keep doing more content that people want to see. And um, uh, it's not a bad idea to like try and experiment and, and see if you can find like maybe other, other so on niches. My YouTube in particular, do you suspect like how many are people, they're probably just like all there for chess. How many people actually care about me as a person? <laughs> so that this so this is this would be like an interesting experiment like put the wikipedia video yeah. public and and see what kind of feedback it gets um and that might give you some some sort of answer um but like if you really enjoy making this like sort of other content that's not chess focused but more about your personality yeah. or other interests i think it's okay to like have a second youtube channel where you can experiment and play around um but it's not gonna it's not gonna bring like the same sort of correct right? it, it could take like a lot longer to all actually the fun stuff i do on twitch if i write a song yeah. i don't want it to die <laughs> that takes me longer than making a youtube video that 12 second mm -hmm. song took me like 12 hours a youtube video takes like maybe four hours <laughs> so it's like three youtube videos i could have made i wrote a goofy mm -hmm. song i gotta get it published it's gotta last forever not 12 seconds on one stream <laughs>
Yeah, no, I, I've been thinking about like doing something like very similar of, of just having a second channel where I can experiment. And yeah, um, I, I think you like you could learn a lot from it, and it wouldn't like it would be less risky than actually putting stuff on your own channel. But even if you put like just occasional videos of non chess content, I think I don't think it's going to hurt your your current channel too much, and it, it can can lead to more opportunities. Gotcha. All right, um, moving back. Moving I don't know if you saw it. like Hikaru, like Hikaru started a second YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's called More Hikaru. And yeah. It's just like more. <laughs> and it's just the same stuff though. His I don't get because yeah. it's not like different stuff. It's the same stuff. <laughs> I think like he just has so much content that he wanted to put like the really best stuff on his current channel. And then if people want to watch more of him, <laughs> just have a second channel for all the kind of supplemental content. Um, but yeah, there's not too many can't think of too many YouTubers with like multiple channels. Um, there's another one who I, I sometimes watch. I think watch. of people that are like specifically just YouTubers, not like also streamers and stuff. I feel like they all have like second channels. Mm. That's weird. Yeah, there's I one I can think of, uh, Graham Stephan. Yeah. Does like he have a the, second? I don't know. I know who he is. So he has, he has three. Um, he's very big in like the personal finance niche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know his main and, one. I don't, he has like three. Yeah, but they're very well defined. Like one of them is like his really kind of polished, uh, prepared content. Another one, it's called the Graham Stephan Show, where he does kind of these short form interviews with people still related to finance. And then the third one is just a podcast where he interviews. He's actually been interviewing like a lot of uh, content creators and YouTubers, huh. um, and that's more like hour long content. Yeah. So um, my mind, like the the YouTubers, like the ones that are actually making it like really big on YouTube, they all have like a couple channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, there's a, a video discussing, have you heard of uh, Patty Galloway? Uh, oh, yeah, he does like the, like how this person did well on YouTube videos, right? Yeah, so it's one of my favorite channels. I have, I think I've watched all the videos on, on this channel. Yeah, there's not that many. It's like really interesting. <laughs> but they're very good. Yeah, so there is one of them, um, I think it was KSI. Well, obviously, it's completely different brand from us, like chess streamers. Right, right, right. But it kind of talked about the, um, the decision making of like having a second channel. Yeah. Um, and there's yeah, a lot it's of really great interesting, stuff. Cause everybody has like a different approach. People, everybody found a different way to kind of like beat the algorithm, blow up on YouTube. Yeah, no, there's so much like there's so much you can learn from these videos that are not like so intuitive, like of how the algorithm works, like the different strategies. So it's. Uh, it's great content. Like if, if you want to learn, but the videos are also like really entertaining too. So, um, but I, I would say like, if you have, if you have the thought of going one way or the other, it's yeah. not the most productive just to like do nothing for weeks. Like either like ex execution is way more important than just having ideas. Um, so and it seems now, like the most the, successful here's my personal problem. If we want yeah. to get, discuss what's wrong with me as a person here i, I make yeah, videos deep, yeah. and like i'll do it, i'll go through all the work i'll edit it i'll watch it and i'll watch it and there'll be like one sentence where i'm like ah, i didn't really like what i said mm -hmm. and then i will not publish it it's this uh, perfectionist mindset i've struggled with this too where you just kind of have to accept things are not going to be perfect and very often like viewers don't care if, if you have like one slip up. Right, and I, I think that too. I'm like, nobody is scrutinizing this as hard as I am right now. Like I think yeah. in the Wikipedia one, the reason it isn't published has nothing to do with whether I should or not. And it has to do with, I think at one point I just said something like, the Nackmanson's dubious, what? Why would you say it? And I'm like, I don't know. Should I really go on record and say it's not dubious? It's a little dubious. And then I just don't publish it. Yeah, some things people like won't even like, and I, probably I, just I know off. that I mean, and I still, you might get the one like I offhand comment don't. but <laughs> yeah no I've I can very much relate where like, I'm maybe more recently I've been like more kind of trying to try to be thorough of editing um or just try and like not say anything that's dubious in the first place yeah <laughs> so obviously that's a, that's a struggle easier. you're alive and you're trying to say everything correctly but <laughs> I yeah, yeah, I feel like I am. Um, That's one of my struggles. So I have like about a hundred videos on there, and I've uploaded. Well, that are private. I've uploaded like hundred and twenty. Wow! So you have a huge backlog that you could just. Yeah, and there's a lot that I haven't. I just didn't upload. Like I made it, mm -hmm. probably edited it, maybe made a thumbnail or not, and I just never uploaded it. But twenty of them made it far enough 
to like, I thought I was going to publish it, and then sometimes a few minutes before, day of, I'll be like, nah, I'm not going to do it. So this is giving me a, another thought, which is related, but, but like before I forget, I want to mention this. Um, and this relates to kind of juggling your schedule of, of maybe not having as much time right. and wanting to focus more on YouTube. Uh, it's not a bad idea to like practice batching of like just schedule, like do, do maybe go hard for maybe a couple of days, make, make a, a dozen videos or, or maybe a handful of videos and schedule them for the coming week. So right. then you can free up more time for everything else. Maybe you can already do that if you have videos that are, are already like edited. You have thumbnails. So the Stafford titles. one, I held on to that. I, I can't remember. The, I said something in there that I'm not happy with. I, there was like probably one sentence I said in there that I didn't like. Oh, I, I, didn't I couldn't notice remember it. what it was though. So I published it. I was <laughs> so enthralled by like your, this Bishop C4 move. I'm sure and there's one I, sentence in there that wasn't. <laughs> Hundred percent, the best way I could have said something, but I couldn't. Re I honestly couldn't remember. I rewatched it. I'm like, eh, I can't remember whatever. Publish. <laughs> Zoom it out there. No, th this is something I, I think a lot of other content creators struggle with is like kind of perfectionism, and I think this is why like some a lot of maybe YouTubers don't stream on Twitch because they want everything to be right. super polished. Um, but then when you're when you're a Twitch streamer and then you're making YouTube content, you you assume everything, like because it's it's gonna be it's gonna live forever on the platform. You have to have everything like perfect. What else and is that's weird? At least for me, down. I don't know if it's the same for you because I guess you don't make that many videos that are just YouTube videos. Like it's mostly mm -hmm. Twitch stuff, but occasionally there's like a just you made a, a YouTube video. Like yeah. live, everything's fine. I'm not choking up. My eyes aren't hurting from these bright lights. But you sit here. I just turn on the camera. I'm ready to go for a YouTube video, and it's like. I don't know. I need I need water again, and then like the lights are oh they're hurting my eyes today, and then like you go live, you just keep talking, and like nothing happens. It's like easier. I've I've struggled with the exact same thing, and you you can't necessarily tell it from my like the videos on my channel that are specifically recorded for YouTube. I do so many takes because right, I right, just right, right. I, <laughs> I so can't get in that like mindset. Yeah. Uh, one suggestion, and it seems like you already do this. If you're gonna do like a prepared, let's say kind of demonstration on, on an opening or lesson just do it live and then all of the ones on afterwards. my channel where i've done that it's because i've tried and messed up probably multiple mm -hmm. times to make a youtube video and i'm like now nah, we're gonna do a live. Uh, if you've seen one <laughs> and i'm doing it live that's the reason <laughs> gotcha i already tried to make a youtube video it failed let's do it live Inter interesting yeah i mean you, you can try doing that I guess more often and it's, it's nice for like the Twitch viewers to actually get a lesson live. Um, they do respond to it well. So Twitch does like that as well. I'll get more viewers and then the lesson will end and they'll leave. <laughs> right. Or you can even do like Q and A at the end of the lesson and then mm -hmm. they might even add to the content. If they have specific questions about lines, you can add yeah, so that. It's nice. I like make video. my video and then it's actually nice. And then I have like, I talk to the chat and we get to go a little bit deeper or just answer whatever. And maybe that makes the video or not. So. Right. Yeah. And I think it's more it, like it feels more authentic too when you actually know you're talking to a live audience right. rather than pre recording. And this is my issue, like kind of getting. And then in a lot zone. of ways, it helps because I'm literally telling this person, and I might even know exactly how good they are at chess. Maybe I've played this person before, and I, I can just literally, I'm talking to a person and it's easier because I'm literally right. making this for you. I'm answering this question for you specifically. Exactly. Um, I mean, if you watch, uh, I assume you, you've watched like a lot of Devin Nash's videos yeah, yeah. and all his videos are like kind of pre-planned uh, or not all of them, but a lot of them are pre-planned talks that he live streams, right, right. but he's still kind of, he's not really like interacting don't do with chat. Well on YouTube for me. Like mm -hmm. when I do a, if I do a lecture on like an opening, I just pick an opening, I'm going to do a video on it. I feel like if I make it and I'm just sitting here, and I record it as a YouTube video, it will get more views on YouTube. I do feel like it performs better than the live stuff. Some of it might be like interruptions that are hard to edit out, but I feel like just in general, they like the well-prepared YouTube lectures from me. I don't know if that's true of everybody, but. Yeah, people, people definitely appreciate it, especially if it's like on some topic that's in demand that um yeah. i mean people want to have content on and it seems like you you've like you very well identified kind of these different uh um trends with uh with chess openings that you right, right. That there's very little content on already on youtube so that's that, kind of uh, what i'm always see. looking for is stuff that nobody else is doing mm -hmm. as soon as somebody starts doing something a bunch i'm just not going to do it oh like if you're doing so you're the stafford i'm not really going to do a thousand stafford videos like somebody's already doing uh -huh. that <laughs> I think it's still like, yeah, it's an interesting kind of uh, 
thing. Of course, like you don't want to copy everyone, like anyone, uh, verbatim. But like you can, you can have your own take on things. Um, because inevitably, like take take an opening like uh, the Roy Lopez or Italian. Um, like there's so many videos out there, and like the, like with chess, there's kind of this concept of infinite content. You can always you can always find like new new perspectives, and um, if it's like lessons or gameplay or kind of discussions with someone else, um, I, I think there's still still opportunities to make videos about content that other people are doing that's still unique to yourself. One of the things I've noticed in your list, because it's it's at the bottom right by my notes that I'm looking at, sure. you put things like you know TubeBuddy and VidIQ. Yeah. Are those worth it for chess? The thing I've heard that it, it, it does well that I don't think any other software really accomplishes is like A-B testing with thumbnails, where you can like upload two different thumbnails, I think titles too, and then see actually which one gets a better click-through rate. Yeah. Do you ever um, change yours? Very rarely. I've done, yeah, I've done a few changes, sometimes based off viewer feedback. I think um, my most yeah. popular one, like the me versus like the Ursov, I played the Ursov against the computer and now it's got like, I don't know, 70K viewers, view, uh, views or something. Mm -hmm. I saved that one. I, I made like five thumbnails. I just kept changing it. It, it did really mm -hmm. bad at first. And now it's like one of my best. Oh, interesting. I, I made a lot of different thumbnails. Yeah. Um, and I changed the title. Like it, somebody it put it on Reddit and their, uh -huh. their title was like human versus stockfish. And I'm like, oh, that's a better way to put this. That wasn't what I called nice. it. Nice. I'm like, oh, that's what people think when they see this. Okay, human versus stockfish. And then it took off. <laughs> you know, it, it can definitely have a positive impact. Like if, um, if your video is not performing well because it has a lower click-through rate, yeah. either because of the title or thumbnail, um, usually it's better to recognize early. So if you're scheduling uploads, sometimes if you do have the time, you want to monitor like the first hour of the upload and see if it's getting kind of the typical viewership. Um, there are times where things can be outside your control. Like if you're scheduling upload, um, like today I, I uploaded a video during uh, this Norway chess. So it could have been like a bit lower than normal because everyone's watching Norway chess yeah. on Twitch. Huh. Um, but I've made changes like well after the fact, like with some of my older videos, um, there's one video, uh, this game, I, I beat Carlson in chess 960. Yeah. yeah. It was originally titled playing Car playing the world champion in like in chess 960. Okay. Cause I didn't want, I didn't want to, um, mention the fact that I won cause I didn't want to spoil it. it. Should hunt, should I, I, I wanted to mention world champion. Because I thought it would appeal to non-chess people, oh, okay. but Magnus yeah, Carlsen yeah. is such a searchable term. Right, right, right. I didn't realize at the time. Yeah. So Everything when I changed Magnus the title, yeah. No, when I changed when I changed the title, I think at the time it had already plateaued at like thirty thousand views, and since I changed it, it's been steadily getting um, more viewership. Uh, and this is another recommendation. I actually didn't know this with your channel, but like you can, you can customize your channel page. So you promote like some of your more interesting content or playlists. Yeah, um, so I do that. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Oh nice. Oh, so you have so a Yeah, I got I got a nice. thing. Whether you're a, a sub or not, you see the the breaking news. Magnus gets crushed by Nackmanson, <laughs> and then uh, yeah. you, know, you get all the the regular uploads. And I made a lot of people are just here for Nackmansons. I made that. Here's all my like computer stuff. And then and the, this one I added yesterday, the what is, I guess I should make it what is the, just the offbeat openings. So for anybody just looking for the rare openings that I've covered, Nackmanson, Ortho Schnapp, Von Henning Gambit, Billinger, gotcha. et cetera. I just made a playlist. So it looks like I got eight of them in there. Oh yeah, this uh, is great. So that's why I keep going with this series. You know, they'll just kind of plop them in there. Because these are the kinds of things that I'm kind of known for, I guess. Mm -hmm. The Nackmanson, the computer stuff, and the offbeat openings. No, th this is great. Uh, it's it's great to have like more organized uh, ways for people to kind of consume consume your content. I can probably learn learn somewhat from what you're doing because my my videos are kind of all over the place when it comes to playlists. Yeah. Um, another thing, like if like uh, what I do is have. Oh, maybe it's not showing. Oh, because I'm viewing mine from my own account. But sometimes you can have like just a featured video on your channel. Um, which I will, I'll change every few months of like my my okay. latest kind of. So right now it's the bow video. test stuff. 
so yeah, if you view my channel, you should see, uh, I guess, Botez, the Botez video. Yeah, I'll change that every few months. I'm not a subscriber. I'm not going to hit the button. It'd be rude. Yeah, if you're not a subscriber, you'll see different videos every month. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, so that's just another way to kind of try and promote your, your better content. Do you do it in any like, smart way? Are you like... Which one? Which of my videos this month got me the most subs? And you pick that one, or is it just? So I actually, yeah, I kind, of, I'll, I'll admit, I do it based on CPM. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> nice. Um, and, and usually, like, it, it's just the videos that have the longest watch time and good engagement, anyway. Yeah, okay. Huh. Um, so, yeah, and, and I guess in some regard that can help maybe generate some extra revenue too. Uh, rather than just putting a video with like low watch time. So I'm also doing bad. It's 25% of the people that watch my things are subscribed. That feels really bad. 25%. So 75% of people are not subscribed uh, on YouTube. I this think is... that's actually kind of typical, especially for smaller channels. And you, you, you do a lot of content that will get newer viewers anyway, because you're, you're doing like these tricky openings that people yeah. can just easily stumble upon or make, get, gets recommended in their, in their feeds. Um, so that's not a bad thing, but that is a sign that maybe you should do, uh, more call to actions. So I do for, it like literally every time. Sometimes uh -huh. I feel like I try to sneak them in the front. Sometimes I put them just at the back. I gotcha. always, I guess in my mind too, I always feel like I should make sure if you've never seen me before, I should offer you something. I guess you could disagree on this, but I offer them some sort of value before I ask for a, a subscription, which might that, mean that's I a good way to do end, it. But yeah. Maybe within, I talk for 30 seconds and then I ask for it. Yeah. And it's something to be patient about. Like you'll, you'll have a lot of people that watch your channel and don't, don't subscribe. Um, but sometimes like if, if at the end of the video, if, if you provide a good value, you can say like, um, don't forget to like, and subscribe. It, it does yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it helps the channel actually grow. Cause when people subscribe and like, um, then it will tell the algorithm that it's, it's better content and the algorithm will push it out to more viewers. So, I mean, some people understand that, but um, maybe yeah, so uh, I always do it's it, still 75%. I also see people workout. like all the time, they just say that's like the very first thing they say in every video. <laughs> yeah, and I, I avoid that. Uh, I, of course, I don't it, know it depends you, on what you want. Gonna, like, I'm not personally going to like subscribe because I don't know you. I haven't like seen anything yet. <laughs> right, right. And um, you don't want to like annoy people with like a long intro. You, um, yeah. I think it's better just to get into the content. Um. But yeah, there are ways to kind of do different sort of call to actions. Um, there's one channel, because I, I know like you said one of your goals is to reach 100,000 YouTube subscribers. That's which, my modest okay. goal. My real goal is to get a, a million before Rosen, mm. but yeah, oh, yeah. I, I didn't, didn't want to let you know. But uh, it, it, yeah, could, it could take modestly, a long time. A modest 100K <laughs> I think would be good. Did, did you see this um, Mr. Beast video where he recorded it five years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he scheduled it for uh, a like a few days ago. Now. Yeah, where he's just, he was just so fixated on getting a million. Yeah, um, I think he got there. I, so <laughs> can double check, but I think he got there. I think he like fifty times his uh, his goal. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's cool. Oh, yeah, that just the guy came in with that goal and he just he did it. Yeah, and he did so, that at like eight uh, k subscribers. He's like, I'm gonna get a million in five years or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's kind of insane to have that mentality. In chess, it's, it's kind really of crazy. insane. I don't, there's nobody with a million yet, right? Like Egg and Matter is like probably close. So Egg and yeah, is um, probably yeah he's definitely the biggest he's like channel, and he's he's a huge inspiration for like so many people because he's not yeah. a title player, and he's just he's found a really good kind of brand of like going over the, the most topical games. Oh, just a lot only seven hundred and eighty. But I mean he's yeah. he's up there, like he'll get a million. Um, no, he, like he's a really interesting case study. And uh, I mean, uh, I'm one thing that separates him is just the sheer consistency, uh, but then also the fact that like, he's doing like very searchable and uh, kind of hot topic games, yeah, for sure. and he does a lot of evergreen content too, um, which is something maybe we haven't really talked about. Which you also you, you're doing with like these opening videos, it's content that won't really go out of fashion right, right, even right. years from now. People will always want people to be banned. I, I know. <laughs> So, so that type of content isn't quite evergreen, uh, but like it's still it still could be interesting. Uh, but more like the, yeah, the openings Nagmanson. are great because yeah. everybody's always going to want to know something about some opening. Definitely. Um, so it's interesting sometimes to like 
watch different channels and see like their evergreen content and and realize the fact that they're like you can have videos that were posted years ago that are still getting views um i know st louis chess club has has, has like a handful of these evergreen videos um yeah, yeah. that are well over a million views and they're still getting getting a lot yeah one of um, them's you <laughs> at least one yes at least one is you yeah, one of the, uh, the these London videos. I know yeah, VAR yeah. has the video, like this beginner openings oh, yeah, and tactics. Destroying everybody. Uh, it's like close to 3 million. So, oh, think. yeah, that one's, so this is perfect. Uh, because he's got literally every single, every single keyword. It's everything everybody's ever wanted in a video. It's like beginner tactics and openings. <laughs> Beginners, openings, and tactics. VAR Kobe, and that's it. That's the secret. It's got it's for beginners. <laughs> Big appeal, okay, yeah. openings, tactics, nailed it all. Got Spread the arrows all in. in the thumbnail. Yeah, he looks good. He's smiling. He's looking at something. Yeah, and it was like um, the other thing that I think contributed to the algorithm really pushing it. It's a fifty-six minute long video. Yeah. So I'm sure you can look up the, the analytics in like the St. Louis Chess Club uh, YouTube Studio, but I imagine it has like a very good watch time compared to other other videos on YouTube that might be in within the 10 to 15 minute range. Um, and YouTube, of course, pushes videos with, with more. So that's one of the time. things that's always weird to me. Chess people, mm -hmm. they're actually here for the chess content. They're not into like silly people that, you know, ban people or whatever. And so it's an interesting balance too, of like balancing what you're really like passionate about, what, what motivates you and doing what viewers want to see. Um, so ideally you have some, some of both. All right, we can. I won't. I won't leak all of our analytics, but yeah, his his view time is great. His view time is great. Like they watch, they watch large portions of it. Yeah, and I've noticed this with like some of my videos is if I, um, if I post like a hour or more long video, if it's like a full tournament or just a full stream, the video will kind of it will perform as well as shorter videos, but then the algorithm will just keep promoting it over time, more so yeah. than the shorter videos. And th this just goes back to watch time. Um, so like the, the most well-performing videos on my channel are, at least the, the top one is kind of this long, um, like 50 minute video where I, I just play kind of uh, like a lot of opening traps in, in the same stream. I think so. I know the answer to this because I've seen you do this. How much do you huh. focus on when you put it out in terms of because YouTube tells you when all your people are watching? Mm. When how do yeah. you use that to decide like when you're putting stuff out? Because you clearly are. Because I assume our viewership is about the same. So I think the most important info. thing is just to try and be consistent every day. Like I don't think it's so relevant. Even though YouTube will tell you, I, I assume yeah. it's probably similar for you. Like most of the audiences on YouTube in like late morning, early afternoon for for us like chess content creators. Um, but YouTube actually says that upload or um, not upload time, publish time is not known to have like a direct impact on the video's long-term performance. Yeah, YouTube keeps telling me that. I wonder if it's true. <laughs> I, I've wondered the same thing. I kind of believe it, um, but I think it's like, it's good to have some consistency uh, to upload, like if you're going to do daily uploads, like yeah. try and upload at the same time every day. Because I noticed day. It, you put things out at 7 a.m. our time. I and... do, except I failed today because I, I messed up this whole whole thing. But, but so my thing, like it usually says, it's actually changed. You might want to check because it might be might be different for us if yours is exactly the same as mine. But huh. it's been like 7 a.m. is when everybody's on. I still put mine out at 8 because I, I start work at 8.30. So usually I spend like 8 to 8.30 like replying to comments and like if you do something if i release mm. a video within like the first 30 minutes that's like i'm gonna comment and then i'm gonna forget about it later <laughs> i'm gonna stop oh, that, doing it i mean that's nice to like be engaged like then then you kind of you 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 make people realize that you're engaging yeah. right when yeah, the video is uploaded uh and you you interact with the notification gang right so that's, that's why i'm so harding everything energy. and i'm like talking to anybody that does it right away and then it's mm -hmm. nah, all right it's over gotta move on with my day <laughs> no that's um that's good. No, I was very impressed earlier today when I commented on your video. It was immediate heart and so pin. I wasn't looking at it in my phone. It told me. It's the only time oh. it's ever happened. Your, my phone That's was funny. like, hey, you, you want to know this. We've never notified you about anything on your YouTube channel. You need to know. Rosen just did. You just did it. The, the algorithm knows. Yeah, you probably didn't so even have like, notifications. So maybe it like just them. knows. 
Uh, yeah, and it probably recognizes that I'm another channel and we're somehow yeah, connected. Yeah, yeah. yeah somehow. <laughs> so brilliant. Um, but so one thing you can kind of take away from this uh, okay. this video or this analytics card on YouTube, where it says when your viewers are online, I think this is a decent indication of when you can when you should stream on Twitch. Stream with oh. Oh, yeah, another thought I've had is should I just put out a video right before I go live is another option. Kind of on the same lines, but, like, different. Because <laughs> so, I can't stream. I can't stream at 8 a.m. I've got a job. Yeah, and, yeah, of course, you have to adjust to your uh, your daily requirements. Um, what I can recommend is if you do have a video to be released and you're going to stream on that same day, yeah, uh, try and release a video right after you end your stream and then direct your viewers to that video. Ah, okay. And YouTube will be super grateful because... Yeah, they still um, don't know it's coming from some other platform. <laughs> it, it's external views and they'll value that a lot more. And I think that's sometimes what the algorithm really interesting. Really yeah, I always likes thought of doing it at the beginning, like, up, like put, publish something and then go live right away mm. so YouTube people come to Twitch. Oh. But maybe it's better to bring Twitch people over to YouTube. I think the problem with that, if, if you're publishing a video and then you're right, going live, yeah. then what, what do viewers watch? Do they watch your video or do, you, do they watch you well, live? Well, so ideally, right, whatever. It's a 10-minute video. They don't see the first 10 mm. minutes of the stream. Whatever. Mm. And then they like they watch the video. Maybe they, they like it. I did something on Twitch in the video. They, they want to check out the Twitch. That was like my gotcha. one idea I had. I don't do that, but it's just like, I don't know. Maybe that would work. I still put things out at 8 a.m. But... Mm -hmm. But doing it at the end is also interesting. Doing it the opposite way, just <laughs> driving everything to YouTube. Instead so the of, so the way I first YouTube kind of Twitch. realized this sort of strategy, I, I haven't done it too often because I kind of stick with the seven a.m. upload time. But there's times where I'm off schedule and I'll just do it. Like I'll I'll have a stream and then I'll I'll post a video. Then even at, like interact with uh, comments on stream in that yeah, video. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Huh. But I've I've only done that like once or twice. Um, but the, the, I've, I've heard this tip from, um, did you watch the Devin Nash talk with uh, the Botez sisters? Uh, it was really long. I watched some of it, yeah. It was, yeah. But like he gave this this exact advice. is like, okay. um, like when to, to release a YouTube video is usually after your, your stream. Um, huh, that's interesting. And he does that. So that does make, <laughs> does seem like something he would do. Yeah, like he even does like the, like, title um ideas and and even thumbnail ideas like on stream yeah like so i do it a different way i actually didn't know if i'd bring it up but i guess i'll i'll do it uh -huh. so i like my i got my little discord channel it's like 100 people yeah. people i actually like so i'm not actually mm -hmm. promoting it don't uh you don't have to go and join please don't i got the people i like but i have a suggestion in my discord so this is this is the only place you actually find me on my own discord is in the suggestion thing i put all of my thumbnails and titles in there Oh, and, so before you actually release the video. Yeah, so I'll like I'll make it oh, the night before, really cool. I'll toss that up there, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll see what people have to say. And and sometimes like I've saved videos because somebody is like they've told me some sort of thing. Like so my Stafford Gambit thing is in there. You can tell me if you like my thumbnail or if you think it should have a better title or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I do that with all my videos. <laughs> I actually really like that idea, yeah, because then you, you can get like really constant feedback and you also know there's a lot of thumbnails for videos that didn't go out i'm scrolling through this and i'm like mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of these that didn't did not go out but you'll also notice i change a bunch like some of them mm -hmm. there's a bunch of them because i did like a million different version like here's some kind of drafts yeah no I, I do the same like sometimes i'll i'll spend up to an hour on a thumbnail or more like doing a draft and then discarding it because it's too busy and then go back to my my template but yeah. it is nice to get like viewer feedback um no, I, I feel inspired now to, to yeah, do that so same only, thing. Only people that are really into you know SEO, YouTube growth, a lot of mm -hmm. good titles. You've put a lot of time in. Only you guys should be joining my, my Discord. Don't think I don't ban people there. Oh, I do. Oh, Ooh. I do. You can make a whole YouTube video about it. <laughs> we can say goodbye to YouTube now, but then I guess we can just hang okay. out for just like a minute here and make a plan. Oh, yeah, that's completely fine. No, I'm, but, I'm super uh, flexible if you want to talk more. And I'm sure at some point people are going to want to like see some eventual... Uh, opening tricky opening collaboration some people have <laughs> even suggested that we play a we play a different kind of game called i beat you i ban you which mm. i oh. think you actually you recommended it highly in this video <laughs> that was my takeaway that's pretty it's i'm limiting this this is gonna be a 60 second video mostly of s some good editing saying that eric rosen said i should ban you all and then following that it's just a chess game that's that's my takeaway
anyways, there's a lot of good stuff, but that's my number one takeaway. I should ban more people. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess if you want to say goodbye to the YouTube audience, be sure to subscribe. It helps the algorithm and like and comment. Um, no, it'd be super interesting. Like for anyone who's watching in the future on YouTube who made it to this point, uh, let us know in the in the comments like what your feedback is. If you want to see more videos like this, if you have suggestions for other other videos, uh, sometimes the best ideas are born out of YouTube comments. Man, you're so good at saying goodbye to YouTube. It's impressive. But Thanks I really do practice. appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to be with you. Obviously, everybody should check out Eric Rosen's channel as well. If you, for some reason, only know me but don't know Eric, it'd be weird. There was one person that said that they knew me but not you. That's weird. But uh, if you don't know him, obviously, you should check him out. Subscribe to his channel as well because he's got some of the best chess content out there. So I really do appreciate it. And thanks for, for hanging out with me today. Would do this anytime.